Hello and welcome to The Pier. Welcome to our online community and to our online service for the week of June 26th. We're so glad to be together like this. And if you're brand new, we want to extend an extra special welcome. And you know what? If you've been watching this and you haven't done so yet, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love for you to connect with us. And you can do that by clicking the link that's in the description for this video. And that will give you a chance to give us a bit of information about yourself and allow for us to, to reach out so that we can start communication, get to know each other better. We'd love for you to do that. Now, before we get started into our um, series for today, or our service for today, I should say, I just want to share a couple of things with you. We're moving into our summer schedule at the church, and so I wanted to give you a heads up on some of those things. Our youth group continues, our kids group continues, uh, things like our Sunday supper continues in our prayer group. So if those, there's areas there where you'd like to, to get involved or to see what's happening, you can email us at info at the peer dot church. And if you live in the area and you'd like to help out in, in an area um, at our church, especially Sunday supper, for instance, uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. So you can email us on that. Also, something I want to let you know, um, in a couple weeks, we're going to move into a bit of a different timing with our online videos. Instead of releasing them at 10 a.m., we're going to be releasing them a bit later in the day. That way, we can give everyone a little bit of a break um, in terms of the preparation involved, and uh, we're going to. That way, we'll be filming them, recording them as part of our Sunday in-person service. But this is just for the summer, and we'll be going back to releasing our. Videos videos pre-recorded at 10 a.m. Um, coming in the in September but just wanted to make you aware of that now today is a bit of a different service actually it's gonna be a little bit shorter but still really special I think you're gonna find it really meaningful uh, in person uh, if this is Sunday for you in person today there's a missionary couple that's joining us that's sharing with us about their mission and uh, sharing a message with us but because of the nature of their missionary work they're unable to record um, we're unable to record them so we're doing something a bit different as our online we're having an extended time of worship and also I've got a devotional that I'd like to share with you followed by a time of prayerful reading of scripture. So I would invite you with this one, approach it in a way where this is a time to really get close to, uh, to God and enjoy being in God's presence. So I'd invite you just to kind of free yourself from the distractions and maybe do whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable and centered on God, reminding yourself of God's presence in this time. And really treat this as a chance to, to spend some time with God. Great. So before we get started uh, in a time of worship, I would like to pray together. So let's do that now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you that you're always with us, but it's important for us to acknowledge that, to realize that, that you are closer than we could imagine. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to bless this time as we worship, as we sing, as we pray, and as we hear from Scripture. Use this time as you see fit. Especially we long for a closer relationship with you, Lord Jesus. So we pray that, that that would happen today. But we just thank you that we can have this time in your presence, knowing that that in itself is good. So we praise you and thank you and ask for your blessing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing. 
amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who leaves the orphan, a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in. All of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life. That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy Oh, this is amazing grace This is unfailing love that you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me All that you've done for me Who am I that the highest king would well I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed, I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am, I am chosen, not 
forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am Yes, I am who you say I am Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house There's a place for me I'm a child of God Yes, I am. I invite you to sing these out as a prayer from your heart to our Heavenly Father in thankfulness for what Jesus has done. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am Yes, I am who you say I am Who the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God I am in its father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am in my father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for that, that great reminder that our identity is found in you, Lord God. And that brings such meaning and purpose into our lives, knowing that, knowing that we are free, knowing that we are chosen by you, by the the Lord of the universe. And that invitation goes out to everyone, to all people. It's nothing to do with what we've done. It's nothing to do with how special we are. It's to do with your grace, Lord, and your great love for us. So we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you for the chance to praise you. We pray now that you would please bless the rest of our time and that you continue to speak to us through scripture today and through this message that we're about to hear. So it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm thankful for that time of worship. And you know what? My devotional for today is intended to continue in that spirit, in that spirit of thanksgiving and worship of God. I'd like to read a passage from C.S. Lewis. This is from his book, The Screwtape Letters. It's a passage that's continually more and more meaningful to me. So let me read it for you. 
Now, just to set it up, these are two actually demons talking to each other. You might not realize the screw tape letters is very important in what it conveys, but it's told from the perspective of the enemy, of the other side. The enemy is trying to take hold of someone, and it explains kind of all of their strategies. But in the process, it shares some really important truths for us about our walk with Jesus. So, after setting that up, here's how it goes. The humans, they live in time, but our enemy, speaking of God, desires, or sorry, destines them to eternity. He, therefore, I believe, wants them to attend chiefly to two things, to eternity itself and to that point of time which they call the present. For the present is the point at which time touches eternity. Of the present moment, and of it only, humans have an experience analogous to the experience which our enemy has of reality as a whole. In it alone, freedom and actuality are offered them. He would therefore have them continually concerned either with eternity, which means being concerned with him, or with the present either meditating on their eternal union with or separation from himself, or else obeying the present voice of conscience, bearing the present cross, receiving the present grace, giving thanks for the present pleasure. And I'm moving on a little bit in the text. It is far better to make them live in the future. Now, this is talking from the perspective of the enemy, what the enemy now wants better to make them live in the future. Biological necessity makes all their passions point in that direction already, so that thought about the future inflames hope and fear. Also, it is unknown to them, so that in making them think about it, we make them think of unrealities. In a word, the future is, of all things, the thing least like eternity. It is the most completely temporal part of time. For the past is frozen and no longer flows, and the present is all lit up with eternal rays. Hence, nearly all vices are rooted in the future. So this passage from C.S. Lewis, you'll notice that there is a real focus on the present. Just how important it is to live in the present moment. To, to kind of seize the moment, to seize the day, as it were. And it gives some incredible reasons for that. But first, let me just think about that. The, the, the fact that humans have this ability to not do that. Most of the animals live in the present moment. They're living by instinct, right? Moment by moment. But not so with humans. We've got this ability to either focus on the past instead or to focus on the future. You know what? We can dwell in the past. And that's expressed in these kinds of sentiments. I, I wish things were better. Can't we just bring things back to the way they used to be? What I, I remember the good old days. I wish things were like that again. And that also, we can dwell in the past, but we can also focus, kind of really put all our attention on the future. We can have, um, we can have fears about the future, even worry about the future. We're saying things like, oh, the world is just getting worse. What's going to happen next? We have this pessimistic attitude. Or we can fill, be filled with like drive and ambition about the future. You know, we, we say things like, if only I could get that job, or if only I could find that girl or that guy, or if only I could make it into that school, whatever it might be, then I'll be happy. You know, so we're filled with that ambition for the future. C.S. Lewis says that the future, it fills up, when we have that kind of a focus on it, it fills us, it inflames us with hope and fear. And, and by hope, I think he means that kind of drive, that kind of ambition. And the fear part I've come to realize that's a really significant thing to realize because the fear of the future, that is something that is harmful to us, right? Because it's kind of this impending danger that we're afraid of. It's not actually here. It's not like something is really happening that we need to be afraid of. But we live in this kind of impending sense that something bad might happen. And 
that's where stress comes from, and we all know how bad stress is for us. Now, we might call these tendencies to focus on the future or to dwell in the past, we might call them temptations. Why? Because they pull us away from the present. They take us away from a focus on the present moment or the present day, which that's what's good for us. That's what C.S. Lewis's point here. The present is all we have, first and foremost, and it's good for us to live in the present moment, in the present day. Jesus says this in Matthew 6. It's a beautiful passage. We actually meditated on some of it last week. I'm just reading the end of it, but I invite you to read all the way through chapter 6 more than once. He says this, Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. I love that. This is the message translation. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And basically, let the future worry about itself. As he says in another translation, today, there's enough to take care of. Today has enough to take care of in and of itself. Because that's the thing. As C.S. Lewis says, we really have no idea what the future will bring. It doesn't exist yet. It's not a reality. All we have is the present. And as Lewis beautifully puts it, the present is the point at which time touches eternity. In the present, we have, as Jesus says, God reality, God initiative, God provisions. That's in Matthew 6 again. Because it's the present where God is working. And so, it's the present where God can be found. You're not going to find him in the past. And a dwelling on the future That's not where you're going to find him either, but you can always find God in the present. And that means it's in the present where we're going to find God's strength and God's grace to do what needs doing. Now, I'm speaking this today because this is something that I am being reminded of, the the importance of right now. Just this, this need to, to live in the present, to, to take time to pray in the present, to, to read scripture in the present, to, to enjoy being with my family in the present. And the thing is, what I'm learning about this is that it really does change you. It's hard to put it into words. You kind of have to experience it for yourself. It fills you little by little, I should say, with this kind of hope, Uh, a kind of peace that's bubbling up, and a love. Because as I said, we're connecting with God when we live in this way. And we're connecting in God in deeper and deeper ways, so we're connecting with His love when we live in this way. And the thing is, this will help with our future. It's going to actually change the very nature of the future in comparison to when we dwell on the future. Because now we know that the future is going to be one in which we are in a close partnership with God. And that makes all the difference. Okay, I hope that was um, really meaningful for you, as meaningful for you as it was for me. And it's a challenge for myself as well. I wanted to share that with you so I can hold myself accountable and continue to live this way. And it's a challenge I give to you. Let's all make sure to live in the present. It's a present moment that's all we have. And to help us in that, a tool to, to kind of practice this is that prayerful reading of Scripture. Really, Lexio Divina and meditation and these sorts of things, it's a way of focusing in on the present, of being in the moment. And as C.S. Lewis says, it's a way of meditating on eternity and on God, being uh, having a focus on God. So I would like to just take that passage and read it through a few times, just leaving some silence. This time we're just gonna we're just gonna read it and then we're gonna leave some silence. And you know what? If it helps to, to kind of stay in the moment, I would say pick a word from this, a word that the Spirit brings to mind. And as your thoughts begin to make your mind wander, maybe about the future, maybe about the past, just calmly 
bring yourself back to the moment by bringing up that word. Uh, and, and each time that that happens, I would invite you to just calmly keep doing it. Don't beat yourself up about it. As I said, it's almost like we have to be trained to live in the present. Our mind more naturally goes to the past or the future. But it's this kind of exercise that helps. So I'm going to read from Matthew 6, verse 34. And I just invite you to make yourself comfortable, close your eyes, and we're going to read it and give time for silence three times. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now, and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. I'm going to read it again. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. I'll read it one last time. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now, and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the present moment, this gift of the present moment, the time where you can be found, where we find your grace and your love and your strength, and we find peace. Help us to train to, to live in that moment. Please, Holy Spirit, guide us so we can live in the present more and more, so that we're not filled with regret or wishes about the past and so that we're not filled with that drive or ambition or fear about the future. Instead, we are just looking to you for your provision, for your reality. Lord Jesus, that we might enter into a closer and closer relationship with you. So it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope that was meaningful for you today, and it's our prayer that these online services would be of a great deal of comfort and, and help in your walk with Jesus. And so we hope you have a great week. We hope that you take this with you into your day, into your work day, wherever you go. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. Bye.